All right, Elliot from Marine Collector is here to share more of his great wisdom uh, with 10 <laughs> missteps in biosecurity. How are you going to mess this up? Uh, there's lots and lots and lots of ways. Uh, I, I actually added one for him up front because I read all this and uh, afraid we we're going to scare you all away. So number one is actually the misstep here is believing that less than perfect is useless. Can I get you to agree? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, biosecurity is bettering the odds. We'll say, let's put it that way. Um, you know, anytime you're quarantining fish, anytime you're bringing something in, you know, let's just say that you're practicing eradication, not management. You're trying to keep your tank as sterile as possible in terms of protozoan or you know, disease parasite. Um, the more you're doing, the better off you're going to be, opposed to not doing any of it. I call each one of these is a calculated bet. So you're going to hear 10 of these ways that you could screw this up. Uh, <laughs> but like you're, each one of them is a calculated, you know, move on your mm -hmm. end. So like adding fish, which are actual hosts for parasites, uh, oh. that's a poor outcome, you know, a calculated mm -hmm. move in many cases. Uh, the single drop of water from another tank. Okay, if you're talking about perfection, yeah, bad move. But if you're talking about a you know calculated decision, I there's nowhere near adding the host. You know, uh, so you're gonna have to make the decisions for you. So number one is less than perfect is useless, just isn't true, and so. That is going to really grate mm -hmm. some of the rule Nazis out there. But the more even, you do, the better. Yeah, even the rule Nazis will say if you practice 50% of this, it's better than 0% mm -hmm. in most cases. Right? Yeah. Okay, All right. number two is a uh, misstep here is distance. You need to be 10 feet away or aerosolized uh, to, get, uh, to avoid aerosolized transmission. Yeah, so. Uh, do quarantine, you know, you have your main display tank. Let's just assume that you've been practicing parasite eradication. There's nothing in there, right? Um, quarantining fish, it should be at least 10 feet away, ideally in a different room. Um, the problem is that the parasites in the free uh, swimming stage are actually small enough that they can evaporate with water molecules and they can travel 10 feet of distance. It's hard to imagine something mm -hmm. that small. Yeah. They can evaporate attach itself to the moisture leaving the tank, <laughs> travel 10 feet, and then land in your tank and piss you off. You know, I, 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 it's, it's really, really hard to imagine that, but it does happen, man, it's yeah, possible. I'll tell you a story. So that Hawaii tank I've got at the shop, uh, maybe like six months, eight months into getting it set up, we got ick in there. And it was because uh, the manifold that comes off of uh, one of the mixing bins at the time, uh, there was a valve open near a quarantine system and it was acting like a Venturi. It was sucking air from by the quarantine while I was doing water changes on the Hawaii oh, no. tank. And it was just sucking air right next to the quarantine where I'm sure there's probably just like a bunch of aerosolized parasites pulling it across the warehouse, putting it straight into the tank. <laughs> Okay, so this it could be if you didn't know any better, mm -hmm. you'd be like, "Oh man, I'm gonna quarantine. I'm gonna do the best with everybody, right? I'm just gonna, like, I'm gonna yeah. kill it." And then uh, I put the quarantine system in the same fish room as my sump, mm -hmm. and I screwed it all up. Yep. Right. Okay, so I would still say though, let's just pretend for some reason, which isn't true, that the only room in the house I could ever have a quarantine system in mm -hmm. is my fish room or the room that the tank's in. Still, man better to quarantine and risk the little bit attaching yourself to moisture and somehow find your tank mm -hmm. than not quarantining at all. So uh, it is true. Don't put that tank within 10 feet. Uh, <laughs> but if you can't, don't think that it, you are doing absolutely nothing because that's not true. Number three, using shared gear, uh, meaning nets, food, hoses, pumps. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is one that came to mind just because, you know, like my employees, I tell them if you're using something or you're next to a system, you finish with that one, go wash your hands, change gloves, move to the next one. Uh, like when we make food in the morning, we'll, we have cups, one for each system, those go to those systems, they don't go anywhere else and they're disposable, we throw them away afterwards. Um, you know, don't be using shared siphon hoses, nets, Anything that hasn't been sanitized, if it's wet, just assume that it's contaminated. Um, 
me, just being as paranoid as I normally am, if it's next to a system, I don't use it unless I sanitize it first. Um, easy way to sanitize, just let it dry for 24 hours. Um, yeah. Okay, so in an environment like here at BRS, dude, this is really a big challenge because <laughs> there's tanks all over the damn place and, you know, the same guy is maintaining all of them mm -hmm. and he's not practicing the sterile procedure that you were just talking about. No. Like, no thing here ever touches another thing. And even if he did, he'd screw it up at some point in time. You know, it's just reality. It's human. Okay, but at the same time, I don't sell myself uh, well, I'm going to just stop getting fish from Elliot. I'm going to go to the cheapest <laughs> possible place uh, and just throw them in. No, I mean, I'm still quarantining the fish. I'm still practicing yeah. the best of my ability on the, my tank mm -hmm. uh, with understanding that less than perfect inside the organization is true. Now, at home, man, it's a lot easier in many oh, cases because yeah. you, mm -hmm. you don't have a whole slew of tanks all over the place that all need to be maintenance yep. at once. I mean, like obviously some people do uh <laughs> me and, well you know what man i read once that uh, in our survey that 15 percent of the reefers like you guys that are watching mm -hmm. have five tanks or more oh my god yeah more than one in <laughs> one in ten people has five tanks yeah right? that's like, awesome i can totally see that because like i got my 90 gallon tank and then i set up a 110 mm -hmm. in uh, another room and then i set up two giant eight foot frag tanks uh, oh. down in my basement. Man, I was at four <laughs> already. And then I set up all of the clownfish breeding tanks. Man, I was actually probably up to like 16 tanks in yeah, my house. You I know? mean, I have marine collectors because <laughs> I just kept expanding, you know? More or less. So, uh, so in those environments, it yeah. actually gets harder and harder. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, uh, so number four is kind of closely related to that, which is clean hands and gloves. Yeah, so um, like this one particularly for me is important just because we're always hands in quarantine tanks, water changes, dipping fish, etc., bringing new fish in, acclimating them. Um, I have like antibacterial soap everywhere, uh, hand sanitizer. We go through like five boxes of disposable gloves every week um you know just to make sure that we're not touching something one system to another even just between quarantine systems but particularly if it's a quarantine system and one of our tanks it's like unmedicated it's a display tank it needs to be as sterile as possible you know one of the things that i learned about rubber gloves hmm. is when you put them on i'm just really hyper aware of what my hands are doing now <laughs> You know, like, so even if I was like, the, the answer is really probably hand washing or even some of the antibacterial stuff mm -hmm. and making sure that I don't uh, cross contaminate. Uh, and the reality is that gloves, man, aren't, you know, really going to do a whole lot in many cases because you're going to get water around them and you're still going to have to change. You're still going to have to watch them. Yeah. But the reality is when I got those gloves on, I am really, it's like a constant <laughs> reminder that these are, they're, these are here mm -hmm. for a reason. Uh, yeah. I'm being careful about what I'm doing today. So if their only function for that 10 cents is to uh, remind you to be careful, they're effective for me. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, uh, this, is the, this is the killer. This is the part, like, for me, really <laughs> harms the whole QT conversation because what happens here is QT for a fish only tank is actually pretty damn easy. Yeah. Right. All mm -hmm. the tanks, the fish that go in there, because once the fish are in there and you get them from somebody healthy, they just stay healthy yep. and for 10 years, man, I won't be adding any more fish. Mm -hmm. Really easy. All I had to do is send fish up front. In a reef tank though, this is it. Yes. Number six or number five, 10 missteps in biosecurity is corals can actually add yep. parasites as well. Uh, Fish parasites. So this goes again to like anything wet can transmit parasites, um, particularly corals with bases, just because the actual insisted stage of parasites like ick can actually be attached to it. Um, the if you're not going to fallow the coral, the better method is to only add the living tissue of the coral. Like it's really easy with SPS, just chop it, chop the base, rinse it, put it mm -hmm. in the tank. Um, a little more difficult with euphelia uh, or any type of LPS. You could always cover, sorry, cover the base with glue. Um, or if you have a bandsaw, I suppose you could cut it all the way down to the flesh. But I don't think that's uh, necessarily the best thing for the coral. <laughs> so I don't know what stage the, the hydrogen peroxide works on stuff like ick. Uh, it doesn't do anything for uh, the insistent stage. stage. Okay, that's it's, interesting. It's uh, 100 parts per million bleach for 12 hours. 
I don't think the corals survived that. Uh, <laughs> all right. So in their spirit, the corals, right, they can bring this in. And this mm -hmm. is where it breaks down because, like, basically a lot of people out there will tell you, well, mm -hmm. if you're not going to quarantine your corals, then quarantine your fish was a waste of time. Yeah. That is garbage. That is the worst possible counsel that can anybody give you. The, the counsel of if you quarantine your fish and your corals, you'll be better off. It's 100% mm -hmm. accurate, supportive, and the right message. To just go out and say that you shouldn't actually quarantine the fish anymore because you're not going to do the coral, yeah. I think is garbage, man. It's not helpful. It's actually I mean, set us back. Uh, you know, all the corals in your tank, you didn't quarantine them. And you've got an Achilles in there. Sometimes it works out. And we know? had a long debate about that in a different episode we yeah. discussed. But, like, I, I do care enough to put the UV on there. Mm -hmm. I do care enough to do the feeding. I do care enough about the habitat and the husbandry yeah. and introduction methods. Bettering the odds. Yep. Yeah, bettering the odds in every case. But the reality was, is I was not going to quarantine 300 corals who were going in there. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't going to be the, the reality of it. Uh, yet, I still don't have ick breaking out on my giant Achilles tank in there. I don't. Yeah. No, you know, it's I, fantastic. You don't see ick anywhere in this tank. No. So, like, that's where we talk about this odds bet mm -hmm. of if I can put 300 corals in there, man, that came from wholesale facilities and were wild collected, most of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't know, man. This is know. hard to believe. It's just, if you know how the biology of the parasite works, the potential's there. I mean, that's undisputable. Okay, it, the, yeah. it, it definitely the potential's there. Yeah. I agree with you a whole bit. Yeah. Right? But what are the chances? Because we don't know the answer to the question. I think it depends on what the system's like, you know, uh, in a wholesale facility, if yeah, you've got this big raceway and there's six fish in there. What are the chances that fish was going to sleep next to the coral that you got? Have ick on it, it attached to that particular coral, and then you get it, you know, before it gets pulled out of that system. Did that, that coral sit in there for three months or did it sit in there yeah. for three days? You know, you know, different thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, going one step further. Wah, wah, wah. Number six. <laughs> uh, next, next, next in, in step, or missteps in biosecurity. Inverts, yes, crabs and snails and stuff too, mm -hmm. man. Yep, their uh, shells, just think of it like little pieces of live rock. Stuff can attach to it real easy. Uh, cool tip though, if it's like a shrimp or something and it molts, you can actually just pull the shrimp out, rinse it real fast and put it in. You just, just sit uh, there praying that it molts, dump it in iodine or something, hoping yep. for that? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, but again here, like, uh, does that mean I need to somehow follow my snails for 11 weeks before mm -hmm. I put them in? Well, the right answer is yes, but in reality, uh, I gotta say, I mean, that's gonna be a big challenge for a lot of people. So obviously, I mean, me personally, like I have zero cleanup crew in any of my tanks, specifically because I don't wanna have to do the following period. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think that the risk is substantially higher with snails than inverts, just because of the way that they're held and they're usually coming in boxes of fish mm. from overseas. Okay. So, but outside of that, you know, <laughs> no, that's interesting. Uh, okay. Uh, oh my gosh, is this really true? Uh, another uh, misstep in biosecurity is these parasites can come on algae. Oh yeah. So I thought that it actually couldn't come on algae; that they wouldn't insist on yeah. like, datamorpha and stuff. So yes, technically, it can't insist on any type of hemp material um, being algae, but. If you think about the algae that you would pull out of a refugium, chato, it's going to have pods on there. All the pods are invertebrates that could have said parasites on there. Oh my gosh, man. Mm -hmm. It never ends. Yep. Okay, number uh, <laughs> eight, 10 set of missteps in biosecurity is an observation tank. Does that mean that you should have one or not have one? Should have one. Uh, like we said in previous episodes, you know, I never tell people quarantines 100%, 100% of the time. It just... Uh, the way pathogens work and the way that living uh, parasites can mutate and build resistance, it's just uh, its unreasonable to think that you're going to have 100% success 100% of the time. So just added measure, best practice, have an observation tank that's unmedicated. You can watch the fish or, you know, I guess it would be uh, invertebrates, corals, algae as well, if you're going to follow it. Um, so watch it, make sure that they're clean before they actually go into your main display tank. So this is the way I guess I'd look at it is like, hey, I buy my fish from marine collectors. Mm 
<laughs> he guarantees me like 99% uh, mm -hmm. free of uranema, ick, uh, velvet, brook, uh, and flukes, yeah. right? Okay. 99% good enough for me. I'll, yeah. I'll take the 1% roll, right? <laughs> uh, okay. But if that wasn't 99% wasn't good enough for me because I just can't, I need to protect my pets, you know, mm -hmm. better than that. Then observation tank exists in my house. I throw that fish in there. It lives in there for a period of couple time. Couple weeks. Yep, couple weeks. It looks good. Okay, I just went from ninety nine to ninety nine point nine 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 nine. Mm -hmm. Still a chance, man. Uh, <laughs> but really unlikely at this point. No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Our right, number nine is actually going from the quarantine to the displays tag uh, take. That's a misstep in biosecurity. Yeah, so I mean, this is kind of just uh, anything wet can transmit parasites. So let's oh. just say that you did the quarantine right. Uh, the way that it works is that the copper or the medication we'll say they're using is inhibiting reinfection, but uh, the parasites could still be in the water. So if you're taking quarantine water and putting it into the display tank, really neat way to circumvent that is just rinse the fish with display tank water. You know, uh, take the tank out or the fish out of quarantine, bucket of display tank water, let it swim around for a second, then put it in, just basically rinsing the fish. Okay, so the, like the lawyer alarm uh, is going off in my head, right? <laughs> like, well, there's three drops of water. You just finished telling me that mm -hmm. like a parasite could ride a piece of mist 10 feet over there. Uh, but like there's three drops of water on the uh -huh. my fish's fins. I now diluted that three drops of water in five <laughs> gallons, but it's still in there. Okay, the reality is this is why it's only 99%. Mm -hmm. You'll never get to 100. You just do the best they can. If you want to go from 99 to 99.9, .9, you you rinse it. If you want to go to 99.99999, you rinse it three times. Yeah, uh, like it just it just never ends, right? And you'll still never be there because it's still small enough that it can ride a, <laughs> ride a you know piece of mist around the room. So there you are. Uh, it is definitely a challenge, and we do our best. Uh, Ten missteps in biosecurity is uh, believe. <laughs> I wrote this one in. Uh, this one's mine. Uh, believing that you're going to do this right the first time. <laughs> uh, the right, though, that you're going to go Google mm -hmm. this and have perfect biosecurity for your entire tank the very first time you do this. Zero chance, man. Yeah. Like uh, by zero, I mean the inverse. It's like 1% or below. <laughs> we'll go read it and then apply all of these mm -hmm. steps perfectly in the way that results in like near perfect biosecurity. Yeah, I mean, like we said in the beginning, just maximize the odds, right? Just do as much as you possibly can to better your odds. Make sure you have, uh, you know, better than fighting chance. You know, just why wouldn't you do it? If you're going to go through all the trouble of quarantining everything anyways, you know, just uh, those extra steps go a long way to not undo all the work you just did. I say believing you're going to do this is the, the right the first time for two reasons. One, if you can embrace that as the truth, mm -hmm. that means I probably should put a little bit more effort into this than I thought. And I should start <laughs> thinking about how I'm going to screw this up. And if I start thinking about how I'm going to screw this up, I'll probably avoid a bunch of the ways that I was going to screw this up. Um, uh, the other bit about it is can say, well, if that's true, should I go out and buy $400 worth of quarantine stuff, a tank and mm -hmm. copper and a copper checker and all this other stuff? Or should I just pay Elliot to do it for me? <laughs> uh, I choose up option number two, especially like if I was burning through fish and you're just killing them all the time, man, like, no. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, all the fish that came with me were from my house to here mm -hmm. to to the uh, facility here at BRS, none of them died, man. They're all there, yeah. you know. Like so, like I'll pay a little bit extra to have them here and healthy, and they don't kill themselves or each other, mm -hmm. and I just don't have to worry about that stuff, and I don't have to worry about how I screwed this up. Yeah. Uh, uh, that one's a little bit worth it to me. <laughs> yeah, I the reason that you exist means that I'm not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> That was very true. <laughs> All right, so check out my lead collectors if you want. Uh, that is the 10 missteps in biosecurity, uh, but we do more videos like this one. We invite guests in all the time. Playlist is right here, and uh, Elliot will actually be back, so subscribe, and you'll see that episode as well.